Hello everyone, my name is Jack Megan Phillips. I am a beast keeper, a parrot killer, ah! sorry boys, and um, I can eat an entire jar of mustard within the space of about 30 seconds. But I'm sure you probably don't want to see that right now. Any hoodles, uh, the reason why I'm here is because I am the author of The Beast and the Bethany, and The Beast and the Bethany 2, Revenge of the Beast. Now then, uh, these books are basically about uh, a young 500 year old, a carnivorous beast, and a rebellious prankster who's about to be eaten. Um, now then, this is the opening chapter of Revenge of the Beast, where a very, very important meeting takes place. Chapter one, the beastly beginning. When Ebenezer Tweezer was 11 years old, the world was much younger. Instead of cars on the streets, there were horses and carriages. In place of phones and computers, people would communicate via letters and hopeful shouting. Electricity was nothing more than a silly word back then, which meant that you could only read books past bedtime if you had an extensive collection of candles. In short, it was a pretty rotten time to be alive. And for poor Ebenezer, it was especially rotten because he was a deeply unpopular child. I mean, it's hard to say what made him so unpopular. Perhaps it was because he had a smug looking face, or it might have had something to do with the fact that his outfits were always rather extravagant, filled with ruffles, colorful patterns, and mm, lovely flowers. Uh, anyway, whatever the reason, it was clear that the other children did not care for young Ebenezer. He was never invited to their feasts, jester jousts, or theatre trips. The neighbourhood bully, Nicholas Nickel, would regularly chase Ebenezer home, hurling rocks at the back of his head. On one such day, Ebenezer was sprinting through a field when he stepped on something squishy. He looked under his shoe and found that the squishy something was a worm-sized blob of grey with three black eyes, two black tongues, and a tiny dribbling mouth. Help me, said the squishy something as Ebenezer scraped it off his shoe. Oh, terribly sorry about trampling over you. As Ebenezer looked at the squishy something, he knew he was holding something extraordinary. For a few seconds, he just stood gazing at it. But then he remembered his manners. Uh, my name's Ebenezer, and I am a beast. If I don't have something to eat soon, I'll disappear entirely. Please, show me some kindness. Ebenezer had never been needed by anyone before. He generally felt like he got in people's way, especially his mother's. He seized upon the opportunity by feeding the beast some grass and daisies. Very kind of you, but that's the wrong kind of kindness. Ebenezer looked behind him and saw that Nicholas was almost within rock-throwing distance. He ran further into the field and picked some blackberries from a nearby bush. Well done for trying, said the beast through tiny gritted fangs. But this isn't exactly a proper meal now, is it? Surely somewhere you can find me something with a pulse. Ebenezer quickly searched around, but the only living thing he could find was a spider. The beast devoured it in one bite. A dribbly smile spread across its lips and its small body grew ever so slightly larger. Keep up the good work and bring me more. Fortunately for Ebenezer, a butterfly happened to fly right into his path. Unfortunately for the butterfly, Ebenezer fed it to the beast. The dribbly smile stretched wider and the beast's body expanded a little more. Clever little boy, who will soon get me back to full strength. Ebenezer was pleased to have made this peculiar creature happy. But his pleasure was interrupted by a rock, which sailed through the air, whacked his shoulder, and ripped his ruffled shirt. There's no running away now, Ebenezer, loser, shouted Nicholas Nickel. 
Ebenezer covered the beast with his other hand so that Nicholas couldn't hurt it. Oh, congratulations, uh, you win, said Ebenezer, smiling weakly. Um, it's my turn to chase you now. This isn't a game, you friendless loser, said Nicholas. He threw another rock, which left a horrid mark on Ebenezer's shirt. Ow! Ebenezer rubbed his stomach with the hand that had covered the beast. What's that? asked Nicholas. The beast was wiggling angrily in Ebenezer's hand. How dare you treat my servant like this? Don't you know who I am? Is that a pet worm? Oh, you really are such a loser, Ebenezer. Right, that's it. The beast closed its three black eyes and shut its dribbling mouth. It wiggled its blob of a body and made a low humming noise as it moved from side to side. Then, all of a sudden, its eyes opened again. The beast spread its mouth wide open and vomited out a blaze of fire. Nicholas screamed, dropped his rocks and ducked to avoid the flames. Oh my goodness, I'm so terribly, began Ebenezer. But then he saw how Nicholas was looking at him. There was fear in his eyes, and that fear looked awfully like respect. Throw me at him if you want to have some fun, whispered the beast. Ebenezer had never been on the throwing side of the game before, and he fancied giving it a go. He threw the beast at Nicholas. As it sailed through the air, the beast hummed and wiggled again before vomiting out a cloud of itching powder. Ebenezer laughed as Nicholas screamed and scratched. The beast, who was perched on Nicholas's shoulder at this point, turned around to face Ebenezer. Its three eyes were hungry for revenge. Watch as I melt this child into a puddle. It's my way of saying thank you. Oh, good gosh, no, I don't want anyone to be puddled on my account said Ebenezer, but part of him wondered what a puddled version of Nicholas might look like. He walked over slowly, and for the first time in his life, he felt what it was like to have power over a bully. Let me go, begged Nicholas. No, 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 that's not how this game works. You never listen to me when I ask you to stop throwing things. And this is part of the fun, isn't it? Oh, please, I'll do anything. Get that thing off me. Anything? asked Ebenezer. Well, if you really mean it, then I'd like you to be my friend. Oh, and could you get the other children to invite me to their theatre trips? Nicholas nodded so vigorously that it looked like his head might fall off. Ebenezer smiled, but not with any weakness this time. He scooped the beast off Nicholas's shoulder and said, You may leave now. Nicolooza. <laughs> Nicholas didn't laugh at this little joke as he ran away, but it didn't matter because the beast was laughing enough for the two of them. Ebenezer continued the walk back to his house, carrying the beast in his hand. Every now and then he would pick up worms, insects, and anything else he thought the beast might like. By the time they reached the back door, the beast was the size of a tennis ball. No one's ever done anything like that to me before. I, my mother usually says that my life will improve once I stop being annoying. Would you like me to melt mummy into a puddle? Oh, no, no, no absolutely not. I, and please, please do stop threatening to puddle people, said Ebenezer. He looked sadly at his shirt, which was ripped and dirtied with mud. But if you can fix my outfit, I would be very grateful. Why fix something broken when you can have something new and shiny instead? The beast vomited out a gold button shirt made from the finest materials. This is the prettiest vomit I've ever seen, said Ebenezer. Oh, you'll stay with me, won't you? I think we could make an excellent team. Yeah. Yes, I think we're going to be great friends. And don't worry, I promise that you will never, ever get rid of me.